good evening church. Uh, welcome to our midweek Bible study. We're going to continue our study on winning the invisible war in Ephesians chapter 6. And so if you have your Bible, go ahead and open to Ephesians chapter 6. How many of you are familiar with the equipment list? I'm sure that you parents who have just put your kids into school yesterday, I'm sure that you're you're tired of equipment lists. You uh, had to gather all of this school equipment to get ready uh, for this school year. Uh, besides the typical backpacks and notebooks, pencils, crayons, pens, and so on, uh, you, had to ask, you had to add masks to your list this year. And so it's a little bit different. But all of you are familiar with the equipment list. And uh, these past several weeks, we've been looking at a spiritual equipment list. Uh, we're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God. Uh, remember Paul tells us that we, we have a relentless enemy. He is out to destroy our testimony. And uh, he is doing everything he can to hinder us from serving God. And so it's very important that we stand uh, in the power of the Lord. We, we, we're strong in the Lord and in the strength of his mind that we put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor meaning all of it. And so far we have looked at the belt of truth, uh, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel shoes, and this last week we considered the shield of faith. Well tonight we're going to look at the next vital piece of armor in, in Christian warfare. And that is the helmet of salvation. Let's read in verse number 17. He says, and take the helmet of salvation. And so I'm just going to read that first part of that verse. And take the helmet of salvation. Uh, let's take a moment to pray uh, over this message tonight. Father, we thank you so much for uh, giving us this opportunity once again uh, to look at your word and uh, to look at the spiritual armor, the equipment that you have provided for us that enables us to win the victory over our adversary, the devil. Lord, I'm so grateful that in your strength and your power uh, and with this spiritual armor that you've given to us that we can overcome any attack of our adversary. Father, I thank you for the power uh, that you've given to us. Uh, thank you for the victory that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I want to remember tonight to uh, continue uh, praying for uh, our students that are uh, back to school today, uh, being their second day back to school. And, and uh, I think about uh, also the uh, members in our church that are working as teachers or working in the school system, I just lift them up to you and pray God you continue to put a hedge of protection around them, continue to use them uh, as lights uh, in this dark world. And uh, Lord, we, we pray that the adjustment to all the many changes that have come with this school year, uh, Lord, that your grace would be sufficient uh, to help them to make those adjustments and and to do it joyfully for the Lord's sake. Lord, bless this message tonight, and I pray in Jesus' name, amen. And so tonight, we, uh, we're we looking here at the helmet of salvation, and I want to begin by asking you a question. Have you ever uh, fell in a time of temptation, and, and later in, in that sense of guilt over your sin that you felt, uh, or, or you question your salvation. Maybe you felt like that maybe I'm not really saved or I wouldn't have fallen uh, into that temptation. Or maybe it might be that you've just drifted away from the Lord and you've lost that intimacy with the Lord and you just feel like the Lord's not with you or present and maybe you're, you're doubting uh, your salvation. Well, you know, I tell you, the devil's going to do everything he can to cause a Christian to doubt their salvation. He, he wants them to doubt 
the promises of God. He wants us to think that God does not really love us. And listen, if you take very many blows like that from Satan to your head, listen, you're not going to lose your salvation, but you will be defeated uh, by the devil. It's kind of like a boxer. You know, a boxer in a boxing match that takes too many blows to the head. Uh, what happens is that he can't remember who he is. It's like he gets amnesia. He, he, he loses a uh, sense of who he is. And, and you know, even Peter talked about that in 2 Peter 1 uh, in verse 9. I'm just going to turn over there real quick and uh, I want you to see what Peter said uh, in that second epistle of his. In verse number 9, he says, But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So Peter's talking about those that do not add to their faith, do not grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they're going to forget who they are in Christ. They're going to forget uh, that they have been purged from their own sins. In other words, they're going to come to a place in their life where they're going to doubt uh, their salvation. And uh, so it's very important that we put on this helmet of salvation to be able to overcome the attacks of Satan because, you know, if you have this helmet on, let me just say, when you get these blows from Satan, it may hurt. Uh, your spiritual ears may be ringing. Your mind may be twirling around. Uh, you can hardly see straight, but with the helmet of salvation on, guess what? You're not going to be defeated. You're going to be able to overcome his attacks. And so I want to look at this helmet, this soldier's helmet. You remember Paul is, is writing about this armor, and he's, he's no doubt looking at these Roman soldiers that are, that are guarding him in prison, and he's using the armor of these Roman soldiers to show us the armor of God that we have in Christ. And so it, what is the helmet used for? You, you look at a soldier, uh, if you look at a Roman soldier, it's going to be a brass helmet and uh, it, it has some kind of padding on the inside uh, to protect his head. Uh, well, obviously this helmet that the soldier wears, it is not for decoration. It is not just so he can look cool or look like a really bad dude. But we know that the helmet is for protection. You get a, a pretty heavy blow to the head, it can uh, cause you to go into a coma, it can cause you to be paralyzed, it can even cause you to die. Even if it was to knock you out, your enemy can then come and finish you off. And so this, this helmet is, is very important, and, and many people still wear, wear helmets today. Our U.S. military soldiers, when they are in combat, uh, they wear helmets to protect them. I think about construction workers that are uh, working in construction. They wear uh, construction helmets to protect uh, their head. Uh, football players, unless you're a rugby player, you will wear a helmet to protect yourself. Uh, motorcycle riders, and of course I know a lot of them don't wear helmets, but uh, listen, if you ride motorcycles, get a helmet on. It's for your protection. And even police, you see a lot of these police having to uh, uh, try to uh, calm down these riots that are getting out of control in cities. You'll see them uh, with full armor on, you'll see them with their shield, you'll see them protected uh, with helmets. And so the helmet is very important to protect yourself uh, from attacks of the enemy. And, and the, the helmets were used by the ancient warring nations going way, way back in ancient times. Uh, I think about the, uh, that Philistine, Goliath, who fought, who, whom David slew. Uh, he wore a helmet of brass, the Bible says. And King Saul did as well. You read that in 1 Samuel 17. Uh, in verse 5, that these, these soldiers and as the Philistines and the Israelites had come together, they were wearing uh, helmets as they were going into the battle. Now, I was reading that the Greek soldiers, their helmets were usually made of thick leather uh, that was molded around the soldier's head, uh, whereas these Roman soldiers wore uh, helmets made of brass and sometimes even made of iron. 
and it had a quilted cap on the inside uh, for comfort. And uh, usually the helmet would have a plume or a crest on top to identify uh, who they were uh, or, or, or which nation they belonged to. Now, the Roman soldiers, they had some of the best helmets in the ancient world. They were one of the most powerful militaries in ancient history. And, and so as Paul was looking at this Roman soldier uh, wearing his helmet prepared and ready for any attack from the enemy, uh, it, it protected him. But I want you to think about this helmet. And uh, it was what you would call the last line of defense. Now, why do I say it would be the last line of defense? Because remember last week we were looking at the shield of faith, that shield that's almost the size of a soldier's body. Uh, it was big enough to carry a soldier on uh, when he died. And so I want you to know that, that that shield would be out before them. And so they would be behind the shield. And so the arrows or the sword would have to get past the shield to get to the helmet. And so the helmet was kind of like... Uh, would be a, a last line of defense. You, you would never have a soldier throw aside his shield and say, well, I have my helmet on, I'll be okay. Uh, you did not want to get a blow to the head if you could help it. But the helmet was there to protect from those attacks that get past that shield, uh, that get past uh, his, his sword. And so that was something that was very important that he had that on. Now, we're going to look at the Christian helmet, or, or as we see here, this piece of armor. We're going to look at it in the spiritual war, the spiritual armor of the helmet of salvation. And like every other piece of armor that we've looked at so far, uh, each of these pieces of armor represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we talked about to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible tells us to do that, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the Bible teaches that, that Christ is our salvation. He, he is our, our Savior. The moment that we uh, repent of our sin and we come to Jesus and we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we receive Him as our Lord and our Savior. At that moment, we are eternally saved. We have salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not in anything that we do, but it's in what Jesus Christ did for us when he went to that cross as the Lamb of God. And there on the cross, he, he took our sins and, and he took them away when he died on the cross for our sins. And he was buried and rose again in victory. And so Jesus Christ, he is our Savior. And so as we look at the helmet of salvation, we need to realize that it that it represents Jesus in, in one sense, and, uh, but we're going to look at also uh, the practical side uh, of this helmet of salvation. Because if we are eternally saved, uh, people will ask, well, why does it matter that I need to take this helmet of salvation if I'm already saved? Well, obviously, Paul is not talking about uh, we need to be saved because he's writing to save people here. Uh, so what, what does it mean? Why do we need to take this helmet as a Christian uh, in sport, spiritual warfare? Well, I want you to remember that the helmet protects the head. Now, you think about the head. This is uh, the center of our thinking processes. We have a brain. God's given us a brain and our thoughts are in our mind. And so our thinking processes, are our motor skills, I mean, if you get a blow to the head, you're not going to be able to use any of your arms or, or your legs. or you, you're, you're going to lose your motor skills, and uh, you can get a big blow to the head, and you're not going to be able to think clearly. And, and so I want you to think about it in that light, that uh, the helmet protecting uh, our thinking processes, our motor skills. And, and so Satan, he wants to give us a blow to our mind. He wants to attack our thinking processes. He wants to get us doubting salvation. Because listen, if Satan can get us to doubt our salvation, Satan is going to win the upper hand over us when it comes to uh, temptation. And so it's very, very important uh, that we uh, have this uh, assurance of our salvation by taking on 
uh, uh, taking the helmet of salvation. Let me give you an illustration. I don't know if you uh, ever read the story about when they built the Golden Gate Bridge uh, in San Francisco. Now, I've, I've, I went there when I was a little kid, and I can barely uh, remember seeing uh, that huge bridge spanning across the bay there. And uh, it's a beautiful bridge, a very large and long bridge. But anyhow, uh, the, the work, when it started on this bridge, it was, it was going very, very slow. Uh, for quite a while, and it's not because they were short on workers or money, because they had plenty of both of those things. The reason it was going slow was because the men that were working on that bridge, they, they were scared to be working that high up over those icy, cold waters of San Francisco Bay. And so they went very slow because they were afraid to fall to their death. And in fact, 15 men or 15 workers did fall in those early stages of building this bridge. And they fell to their death. And so finally the contractor, because this made people so afraid that it got slower and slower, so finally the contractor got the idea of, of expanding a net under the bridge all the way across the bay. And, and so he, he put this net there and, and the work began to move very, very quickly. Uh, with each passing day, they got further and further ahead and, and they actually finished on time. And, and there's only, I think, two people that fell after the net was uh, put in place and those men did not die. And uh, so this, this work was able to go on and be finished very quickly. And you may ask, why is that? Well, one word, security. Security. They had security. They had assurance that if they did fall, that they would be caught by this net. And so this freed up the workers to focus on the task at hand, not worrying about trying to keep their balance in these blustery winds that blew through the San Francisco Bay. And so that's a great illustration if you stop and think about it, that how that if we lack security of our salvation, uh, we're not going to be able to focus on doing what God wants us to do. We're not going to be able to win the victory over these battles that Satan uh, is bringing against us. It's so important that we have security of our salvation. And we need to be sure of that. Paul wrote this in 1 Thessalonians 5 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. There in that passage, Paul, he calls it the hope of salvation. So this helmet, the hope of salvation. Now, what is hope of salvation? It's a confident expectation of salvation. And so I want to I give you two uh, applications from that thought. That and, and so to help you understand what it means to take the helmet of salvation. The first thought is this. Taking the helmet of salvation provides us with the assurance of salvation. See, assurance is based on what you know and who you know. If you don't have a firm grasp of the truth of salvation from the Word of God, and if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ personally as your Savior, it's going to be very easy to doubt your salvation. Because, you know, you can walk and try to live a life that's good and right, but when you fall uh, into some sin, uh, Satan's going to uh, shoot one of those fiery darts of doubt, uh, and he's going to hit you in the mind, the head, and cause you to doubt your salvation. You're going to be asking, am I really saved? Uh, because Christians don't really act like that, and, and you're going to be uh, really struggling uh, to walk with the Lord. And so I want you to realize how important it is. You take the helmet of salvation, it, it has this idea of making sure that you have assurance of salvation. You know, I like 1 John 5, 13. 
John said, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You know, when we believe on the name of the Son of God, when we trust Jesus as our Savior, we have the promise of God that we have eternal life. And, and this life is not in us, it's in Him. It's by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and whom Jesus saves, He keeps eternally. And so we need to have that nailed down in our life. So taking the helmet of salvation is, is, is being is remembering, reminding ourselves that we've been purged from our sins, reminding ourselves that we have put our faith and trust in Jesus, and that Jesus is going to keep his word, his promise, he's going to keep us to the end. And so this is, that's what it, the idea of taking the helm of salvation. So when Satan comes against me and attacks me, and, and, and says, you know, like for example, if I fall into sin, if I fall into some temptation, and uh, I feel that guilt, and Satan comes and says, see, you're not really a Christian. I need to remind myself who I am in Christ, that I am His, and I belong to Him. He purchased me with His own blood, and, and I need to go to the Father and confess that sin and get it right so I can restore that fellowship. But I need to always be remembering and keep in mind uh, 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 who I have trusted. You know, it's kind of like what Paul said in uh, 2 Timothy in chapter 1. <clears throat> I like what he says. There's actually a hymn that we sing uh, uh, based on this. And uh, he, he says in verse 12 in 2 Timothy 1, which calls, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. And, and the word ashamed has the idea of not having confidence or courage. He said, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. So Paul, you know, he was under so much attack from the devil. He suffered so much and and, uh, but he says, I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. And am persuaded that he is able. And, and so that, that is very important. That's taking the helmet of salvation. Paul is taking the helmet of salvation. He said, I know whom I believe. And I know that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. But there's a second application. Not does it only have to provide us with uh, assurance of salvation. But taking the helmet of salvation provides us with the assurance of God's deliverance. The assurance of God's deliverance. See the word salvation in the Bible, it doesn't always refer to uh, being saved from sin. The word salvation means deliverance. And so it's not always talking about our soul salvation. It could be, <clears throat> excuse me, physical deliverance. Deliverance from uh, a trial, deliverance from sickness, and uh, many such things. Let me give you an example. Remember Peter. When Peter and the disciples were in the boat, they were to see of Galilee. And Jesus came walking on water, and Peter said, If you're really the Lord, ask me to come walk to you. And so he did. And so he got out of the water, and Peter was walking on the water. And then he saw these big waves coming, and he got and Peter began to sink. Excuse me, just one moment. <clears throat> Some uh, flavored water here. I need something for my throat. <clears throat> so Peter he began to sink and, and he cried out and said, Lord, save me. Now I want you to think about that. He said, Lord, save me. He's, he's asking the Lord for salvation. Now, we know Peter was an apostle. We know Peter was saved. He had trusted Jesus. He, he was a follower of Christ. So what is he asking? He's asking salvation from, from drowning. He was sinking in this tumultuous sea, and, and he's praying to the Lord to save him from drowning. And so I want you to understand that taking the helmet of salvation, you know, Lord, I, let, me, let me back that up. Satan, our adversary, can use difficult trials. He can use storms in our lives to cause us to doubt God is able to bring us through. He can, he can cause us to doubt that God really loves us. 
It can cause us to doubt that God's really with us. We can just feel like God's forsaken and left us. We're here in this storm and we're, we're like, Lord, how, how could you leave me in this storm and leave me alone? How? That's, that's Satan attacking us. But taking the helmet of salvation is, is the assurance of God's deliverance. It, it's assurance that I know that I'm in Christ. That I'm accepted in the Beloved. That I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit till the day of redemption. That I'm kept by the power of God through faith until uh, the day uh, of redemption or salvation. I, 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 I'm reminding myself who I am in Christ. And knowing that I can call out to my Father in, in this storm and, and He will hear me. He will answer my prayer. It may not be the way I want. It may not be in the time that I want. But putting on the helmet of salvation is when Satan attacks you with those thoughts that God is not with you anymore, God does not really love you, or he wouldn't let you go through this storm. Take the helmet of salvation. Put on that helmet. Stop listening to the lies of the devil as he's attacking you in your mind. Stop letting him control your thinking. Because your thinking, what you think leads to motor skills, what you do. And so if you're thinking God does not care anymore, that God is not with you, that you doubt your salvation and you doubt that God's going to bring you out of this trial, you despair. And Satan just won the victory. And so what you have to do is put on, take this helmet of salvation, knowing that you have security in Christ, knowing that you have deliverance in Christ, that he will bring you through uh, every trial that you go through. So we cannot afford, Christian, to lay aside the helmet of salvation. We cannot lay aside any piece of armor for that matter. You know, some Christians become relaxed and they, they get tired and, and they just lay aside this armor. And they put aside that breastplate of righteousness. They, they, they lay aside that belt of truth and, and before long, they're defeated by the devil. Let me ask you in closing, is the devil tempting you to doubt your salvation? Is he attacking your mind and your thoughts about salvation? Has he been telling you that there's no way you can be a Christian because you're not good enough? Now's a good time to examine and see whether you are in the faith. It's good for us to examine, are, am I in the faith? Do I really know the Lord? Am I trusting the Lord or am I trusting my works or something I did? Make sure you're trusting Jesus and in, in the shed blood on the cross for salvation. And, and if you have trusted Jesus Christ, stop believing the lies of the devil. Put on that helmet of salvation. Put on that security in Christ. Know that you're accepted in the beloved. Know that salvation is of the Lord. Know that it's by grace through faith. And you know, if you go through a storm, Christian, maybe you're going through a storm and you're, it's, you're, really, you're really getting to the point of you're doubting God and if he's going to help you and get you through this storm. I want you to remember that story about the bridge, the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge that they built. You know, when they had that safety net underneath them, they, they had security. They knew that if they did fall, they'd be caught. I want to tell you as a Christian, if you do fall in temptation, if you do fall in the midst of a storm, I want you to know you're going to be caught. If you belong to Jesus, you're going to be caught. And that net that's under us is the very hand of God. Jesus said this in John 10, 27 through 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me, and I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So think of the security Jesus gives us in, that ver in those verses. If you're one of his, if you belong to him, if you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, just remember... He's holding you in, your, in his hand, and no man can pluck you out. That's security. Put on that helmet of salvation. When you're being attacked by the devil, whether it's in a storm, whether it's doubting your salvation, 
Just remember who you belong to. Remember that you are in Christ, that you're safe in Him, and He's going to take care of you. He's going to get you through the storm. But if you don't know Jesus, I would encourage you to put your faith and trust in Jesus. If you want to know more about how to do that, please send me an email at pastor at bbcdumas.com. I'll be happy, happy to communicate with you and we can talk about what the Bible says and how you can trust Jesus as your Savior and know for sure you're saved. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the helmet of salvation, the security that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we're saved and that you are for us and not against us. Lord, bless this message. Use it for your glory. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I can't wait to see you Sunday and thank you for tuning in tonight. And Just remember there's going to be uh, a special announcement coming this Sunday, so I hope that uh, you'll be able to join us in our service at 1030 here at Bible Baptist Church. Uh, if for some reason you can't join us, uh, I hope you'll join us uh, through our live stream uh, this Sunday. God bless you and have a wonderful evening.